Oh, I am in such a great mood this afternoon. All day today, I have been dreading having to go to my five-year-old nephew's baseball game later tonight. Now, I know that makes me sound like a terrible uncle, but I can get away with saying that because I'm the best uncle in the world. I mean, I love the little chump, but I don't like watching professional baseball, much less a bunch of five-year-olds standing in the field trading boogers and dingleberries. That's not what I consider a quality Thursday night, but that's okay. That's okay. I'm going to go. I'm going to have a good time because I'm in a great mood. No, I'm not in a great mood because I'm going to game three for Suns Pels tomorrow night. I mean, that does have me in a great mood too, but that's 24 hours away. I'm sitting at lunch today, a couple hours ago. I went for hibachi today for lunch. If I'm not meeting somebody for lunch, I always take my laptop with me. I will use that time to catch up on the book, start looking for a topic to cover that afternoon here on YouTube. I open my browser to pull up the book, and my news feed popped up. And what's the first story that shows on my news feed? The Google algorithm is so fucking smart. I want to take a second to thank Google for immediately bringing this story to my attention and brightening my day. The first story on my news feed, Jamel Hill and Rex Chapman are both huge embarrassing failures. I didn't think it was possible. I did not think it was possible to top Bamani Jones in the category of huge embarrassing failures. Like I say all the time, no one does failure like Bamani Jones. If the media career of Bamani Jones was dependent on the flip of a coin, one side of the coin reads success, the other side read prosperous, in this scenario, success on one side, prosperous on the other, there is no way Bamani Jones can lose, right? If his media career depended on the flip of this coin, it's either going to be a successful career or a prosperous career. It's a win-win. No way Bamani Jones can lose. Except, this is Bamani fucking Jones we're talking about. He would lose the fucking coin. I have got to give credit to Jamel Hill and Rex Chapman. It takes a lot of hard work, a lot of effort, a lot of dedication to beat Bamani Jones in the game of failure. But somehow, some way, Jamelli and Rexy have achieved the impossible. We now have a three-way tie for the title of Huge Embarrassing Failure. It was announced earlier today, after just three weeks on the air, CNN is pulling the plug on CNN+. Plus. Let's go ahead and pause for a moment of silence to honor the deaths of the media career of Jamel Hill and Rex Chapman. Okay, I feel better now. I guess, you know, I guess a more appropriate demonstration would have been for me to get on my knees, but, you know, I've never been a fan of kneeling. Judging by their numbers, many of you probably don't know what CNN Plus is or that it even existed. CNN Plus was the brainchild of Jeff Zucker, former president at CNN. He's no longer at the network. I can't remember... I can't remember if he was the guy caught spanking off to Rachel Levine on a Zoom call or the guy who was caught having a relationship with a non-binary toothbrush. Either way, Jeff Zucker's a big loser and is no longer at CNN. It's probably, probably a good thing for him because his streaming service was a steaming pile of dog shit. CNN dumped hundreds of millions of dollars into CNN+. Plus. It was promoted relentlessly. The app received more media promotion than Bamani Jones. They went out and wasted money on useless shit fucks like Jamel Hill, Rex Chapman. They convinced Brian Stelter to join the app by providing him with two dozen donuts in the morning instead of the usual dozen. They wasted millions of dollars on Chris Wallace, one of the most despised virgins in the media. Chris Wallace... Chris Wallace is like a dildo at a non-binary pride parade. They don't mind it being there. They just can't figure out a use for it. Oh, and I almost forgot Don Lemon. Don Lemon was featured on the app too. He took a break from fondling the lemons of men at bars to provide his services to CNN+. Plus. But alas, it wasn't meant to be. Even with all this star power, CNN Plus averaged less than 10,000 viewers every day. To put that number in perspective, 
This dumbass right here is averaging 15,000 viewers per day right now on YouTube. And April is one of the slowest months of the year on this platform. In March, this dumbass was tripling the viewership numbers of CNN+. Plus. When the announcement was made that CNN Plus would cease to exist, I traveled to the land of virginity. Social justice warriors, they like to call it Twitter, to see the reactions of the woke to this news. I wanted to see what the bald gooch Rex Chapman had to say about once again being unemployed. Last month, Rexy was interviewed by the New York Times, and the gooch said that he was in fear of his own success. Oh, I tell ya, I don't know if I can handle this large of an audience. I am so scared. This massive platform will make me famous. Someone might see me on the streets, mistake my face for a toilet seat, and sit on me. Oh, wait a second. That sounds nice. I love a good round of butt bongo. I might finally lose my virginity. I checked for Rex Chapman's reaction to him, you know, having to go back on food stamps, but he's strangely silent. On average, the Gooch tweets about 60 times every day. 60, six, zero. His Twitter bio says, I hold the microphone like a grudge. Well, you don't have a microphone now, Rexy, you're unemployed. Perhaps this is more woke speak. When Rex Chapman says he holds the microphone like a grudge, I think he's talking about the propeller of Leah Thomas. But don't worry. Rex Chapman might be silent, but Jamel Hill will never be silenced. Jamel Hill is unbothered. Someone tweeted to the Witch of Woke, congratulating her on her short-lived success at CNN. Here is Jamel Hill's response. I'm going to be fine, peasant. It's called a contract. Learn about it. A contract means I will continue being paid to be completely useless. They can't void my contract because I'll call them racist and misogynistic. You see, God protected me at birth. Jamel Hill actually does make one excellent point. The same point that I have made several times when talking about this disaster. On one hand, I can sympathize with the production staff, the research team, editors, the people behind the scenes. You never want to see hardworking people lose their jobs. Launching a streaming service, it's a lot of work. I'm sure hundreds, if not thousands of people busted their ass to see CNN Plus come to fruition. It sucks that they're now unemployed, especially in this Joe Biden economy. In a perfect world, the hardworking people behind the scenes would be protected. At least they have a skill set, unlike Jamel Hill and Rex Chapman, whose only skill is converting oxygen to carbon dioxide. So on one hand, I do feel bad for these people, but on the other, I have no sympathy for you. You knew what you were signing up for when you agreed to work at CNN, when you agreed to align yourselves with people like Jamel Hill and Rex Chapman. It's the same as aligning yourself with Bamani Jones. These people never succeed at anything. Between the three, can you name one project, one show, one media venture that was successful? You could combine their audiences and it might fill the Superdome. I don't know how much clearer the message can be. America has rejected the religion of wokeism. You look at these major conglomerates that embrace being woke. The NBA set record low ratings two straight years. Look at what's happening now in the NBA. Queen woke LeBron James not involved. The NBA has remained largely apolitical this season. Ratings for the playoffs are through the roof. Huh. Ironic how that happened. Netflix. Netflix started promoting woke bullshit like Colin Kaepernick and that perverted show about little girls. I can't remember what it's called. I was watching Fox Business earlier today. Netflix stock has dropped something like 37%. They've lost tens of millions of subscribers. Disney. Disney is in the shitter right now. They're catching heat from both sides. The deranged shit fucks are mad at Disney because they're not woke enough. Normal people are boycotting Disney because they want Snow White to be impregnated by the non-binary dwarf. Then we have the ultimate example, CNN+. Plus. Anyone with a thinking brain knew this would be a disaster, but executives at CNN, mainly Jeff Zucker, 
They thought this would be a massive success because CNN is popular on Twitter. Twitter isn't real. Social media isn't real. It's a fucking fantasy. It's not real life. This is the kind of people using Twitter. Look at this stupid fuck on a plane wearing two masks and a pair of fucking goggles. Oh, and don't let me forget the headphones, you know, because the Kobe can be transmitted through your ears. If I sat next to this guy on a plane, I would kick my own ass. There was a study conducted recently by some outlet named Spike. Shout out to OutKick for bringing this to my attention. Anyway, Spike polled registered voters. Their study found only 8% of Americans identify as woke. 8%. Of the 8% that identify as woke, 99% of them are unemployed. Another 75% don't bathe regularly. 100% are virgins. 70% are illiterate. 95% are eligible to compete in the ugly pageant. My question is, why do we continue to accommodate these people? Let me know what you think. Who owns the crown of huge embarrassing failure? There's only one crown. We can only give it to one person. Does it still belong to Bamani Jones? Or has Jamel Hill earned it? Any votes for the Gooch Rex Chapman? Let me know. Sound off in the comments below. Make sure to like and subscribe. Click the notification bell to receive all notifications from the channel. Best way to contact me is by email at btlkc84 at gmail.com. KC underscore BTL84 on Twitter. See you guys tomorrow.